a show. They break. Woo! Jonah writes, why do you like L.A.? A few blocks behind my house, they're reclaiming something called the Expo Line, which will bring people from downtown to the sea. I used to walk on the abandoned tracks down into the gully, flanked on either side by agave and bottle brush trees. I'd stop right underneath this footbridge because you could feel them looking at you, a smaller, quieter version of what you might feel like right before a big cat jumped you. Thirty, maybe forty pairs of eyes buried in the grass, a pack of feral cats, long-haired ones, all different colors, and they would stare at me with that bored, indifferent stare of a contract killer. I called it the Valley of the Cats, but they're all gone now, driven out by crews restoring the line and their heavy machinery. A friend of mine told me that once there was something similar on the east side of town, a pack of feral cats near the Silver Lake Reservoir. But they were driven out by the Chihuahuas, and the feral Chihuahuas came in waves. The first wave was in the early 2000s. By all accounts, they were vicious. They were breeding themselves back into nature like tiny little wolves. It got so bad that when 174 of them were captured near the Red Lion Inn, they were sentenced to death until Gregory Peck's daughter-in-law held a candlelight vigil. You think I'm shitting you? We uh, liken them to coyotes that would fit in handbags. I'm not sure when the second wave started, but a local resident named Diane Edwardson started documenting the resurgence of the Chihuahua. On her blog, she writes, October 2nd, 2010, last week, several hikers and their dogs encountered a roving pack of vicious, intact, not neutered male Chihuahuas north of India Street. July 4th, 2011, demonstrating their exceptional survival against coyote skills, the tiny, vicious dogs raced circles in opposite directions around us, attempting to chase us off through annoyance. And recently, there have even been accounts of hawks attacking and carrying away these vicious chihuahuas. There's also a company of parrots here that you see from time to time, and yes, it's called a company. There's a few hundred of them, and they're about as big as crows, and they sound like dying devil babies when they fly overhead. In 1959, they were released from their cages at Simpson's Garden Land and Bird Farm during a devastating fire, and then they wound up in Hollywood, like you might someday and like I did. Have you ever stared at a spot on the ground for a while? If you hold focus and don't move your eyes, the surroundings start to fade and blur. The receptors on the back of your eyes start to fatigue and they eventually become blind when you stare at the same thing. Move your eyes just a tiny bit and it all pops back. I've lived in a few different places and I've told people why I like living there in terms of things like climate and traffic and museums and beaches. But over time, these things have faded and blurred as I've become focused on some one thing. In New York City, I'd been living in that trap of focus for some time. And when I moved out here and saw a passion fruit flower for the first time, something just popped back into focus for me. I think I could have found it in New York too, a new sort of attention paid, but I needed a push. And I guess I like LA because it gave me that. What's some small detail about where you live that you like? Just a reminder, it's getting close to holiday season and the post office gets quite busy, so if you'd like to give a poster as a gift, please allow two to three weeks for delivery. And remember to submit a song about you. I'm starting to put them together. There are not, to my knowledge, there are no packs of chihuahuas roaming the Great Plains or anything like that.